Seeking relief through escape is only temporary. The need to escape will always return. Today, I've got a great episode for you. Um, I'm diving into the difference between being in an escape mode and whole self-care mode. And I'm doing this because I noticed that some of my tendencies were more in escape mode over the holidays than whole self-care. And so I don't want you to fall in the same trap. And I also don't want this year to be filled with escape routes. So with that, let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to the Full Way to Joy podcast, the podcast for women who are done stressing about the weight of the world, of expectations, and settling for status quo, and ready to step into the full weight of joy. Joy in the journey, whether up or down, joy through the life's challenges, and joy in loving your life right where you are, even though sometimes we feel like chucking it all and moving to Bali. It's for women who are ready to step into who God called them to be. He chose you to be in this world. He created you for a specific purpose. God called us to be the light on a hill, and by embracing who you are and whose you are, you can stand on that hill and shine. The best part, when you're standing next to another woman who's also on the journey, the world gets brighter. My name is Tammy. I'm your host and a master certified life coach and a trained therapist. For over a decade, I've been helping women do just that. Step into who they're called to be and shine. Are you ready, friend, to start your journey? Let's do this. back to the podcast. I am so excited that you're here and I've got a great episode for you today. This is an episode that has been on my heart a little bit and it's, it goes, I've been hearing trends and when I hear trends, a lot of times, you know, sometimes they're great. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I like where this is going. This is one that scares me a little bit and I don't want it for myself and I don't want it for you. And it's the idea of self-care in but really it's because you need to escape and i heard a, a heard someone talk about um not and i'm going to completely flub this up because i don't have it in front of me but they're talking about don't travel for the purpose of escaping to a to a new life like build a life that you love that you don't want to escape from that you don't want to leave like the purpose of travel is not to get away from your current situation. The purpose, and I, and I, I, this is speaking from someone who loves to travel. I love new experiences. I love learning new cultures. I love trying new foods. I love going to different places and just experiencing what that culture and those people there have to offer. Like, I love to see the differences. There are some times that I want to travel to because i need a break and even that like that's borderline but when we need to escape our lives that is a dangerous place to be in that is where we are constantly feeling overwhelmed we have avoidance behavior like if let's let's talk about three here's three signs them some signs to know that if you're in escape mode you know the avoidance behavior spending xx time binge watching TV, overeating, um, overusing substances. Um, you're always feeling overwhelmed, anxious. You're numbing out. You're constantly on your phone. You're wishing that it was you were on that next trip and not because you want to experience it, but because you don't want to be where you are. Um, the feeling of relief is temporary. Like you relax for a moment, but then it's short lived and the anxiety returns immediately it's like so you go get a massage right and you walk back in through the door and the effects of the massage are gone because you're stressed and anxious um as soon as the activity ends the need to escape comes back the need to numb out the need to be and do something different um neglecting responsibilities um ignoring or postponing things that are really important for for you, whether it's, you know, the normal things like paying bills, making doctors, doctors appointments, um, you know, like organizing things like just those neg neglecting responsibilities in favor of escape activities, like in favor of numbing out. So when we do that, like we are, we are trying to get rid get away from our current situation versus 
trying to like, it's not, that is not self-care at that moment. Those activities you're doing, though may be considered self-care um, before or other people can consider them self-care, uh, whole self-care, in this moment, you're in survival mode. You're in that self-triage that I talk about where you're just trying to hang on and this is a dangerous place to be. And you don't have to stay there some of the signs and some of the things like, let's talk about um, whole self-care for a moment. Um, some of the things, so watching a TV show because you enjoy it, not because you want to numb out or just do a mindless activity, um, exercising, meditation, prayer, um, healthy eating, like anything routine and cr consistency. Whole self-care means taking care of your needs, not, trying to put a band-aid on a gaping wound like you can't you can't put you can't rip off your arm and fix it with a band-aid and that's where the escape mode that's that um, self triage comes in so it's really important that we identify this and you know what i don't want this for myself this year i don't want it for you um, i have noticed and even as i'm talking about this like some of the neglecting responsibilities that i have been doing like there's a couple things that that I, the things I, I want to do, I want the results of it. I want the outcome, but I, and I know it's important, but I've been putting off doing it, making the phone call. The phone call is not a lot. It's, you know, making a dental appointment. And yet I should have made it two weeks ago and I haven't yet. So that, I it allowed me to get curious. Okay, why am I not doing that? It's like, well, I kind of just, I'm kind of in escape mode for the moment. Like we came, we're coming out of the holidays. It's time to ramp up. It's, you know, we, we slow down and now it's time to dive in. Like we are a little over a week into 2024. I don't know about you, but I love the start of something new. I, I actually have, and I've talked about this before. I do new year's like twice. We have the, you know, new year and, and January, and then we have in August, like when the kids go back to school, when we start that school routine again, when we um, shift out of the summer mode and go into fall and routine again. Um, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy planning it. I enjoy um, getting excited about it. But when I start to notice that I have some escaping tendencies, that's when I need to ask myself why. And after I looked at it, it's just... There are some areas of my life that I did not set down and rest with. Like there are some things that I working so hard in one area that other areas kind of got neglected. And so now I know that that's an area that's a, that's a that's an area that I get to explore and I get to like hit head on over the next couple of weeks. Like I get to do that, and by understanding when I start to feel that I want to neglect it. I can choose a different way. I can remind myself that, no, this is something that I actually need and will help in the long run. Like this is something I need to put on my big girl panties and I need to just do it, whether I want to or not. I need to make that doctor's appointment. I need to make those dentist appointments. I need to get in and, um, well, just all the different things. Like I, I do, I need to go through my closet knowing that half the pants that I own don't fit me anymore. Like things like that, that I have been avoiding. So let's talk about um, even more. Like I started talking about the routine and consistency, um, feeling of long-term well-being. When you are practicing whole self-care versus escape mode or, you know, self-triage, you feel it longer. That massage that you get, because getting a massage is a great way not the only way for whole self-care, but you feel it like you, it brings your shoulders down and it's more out of a, it's a luxury. It's an enjoyment versus you're so tense that you can't, it's the massage is painful. Um, in, I think it was November, early November, my daughter and I went to, um, we drove to Alabama to, for my sister-in-law's baby shower. 
Uh, it was just the two of us. We had a great time. My back locked up so bad that even getting in and out of the car was um, incredibly difficult. I had been neglecting and I hold my stress in my shoulders. I know that when my shoulders are touching my ears that I like long ago should I have reduced stress. Well, I got there. Luckily, my dad's wife and um, she is an amazing Thai masseuse. Like she, um, she can, she's tiny, but man, those fingers are strong. And during this massage, and she gave me, she did one the first night I got there to kind of loosen it up. And she's, she's like, you are completely seized up. And I have no idea. I did not, it, I didn't recognize the warning signs. That massage was so painful. My daughter sat and held my hand and she's like, I, and I, like it, it, I teared up because it was so painful every touch, but I knew that it's what I needed. Like she was doing what I, because it was so locked up um, and frozen. And she gave me some vitamins to take and she, um, you know, hot press and different things. And the next morning she did another massage and again, so painful, but it also started to relieve the, pre the, the stress. So she did a few more. Um, I was there for just three nights. And so morning and evening, she would give me a massage. And by the last day, it, it didn't hurt anymore. And she's like, Tammy, if you don't start going and getting these monthly, and she goes, you don't, you need a, a good Thai deep tissue massage, not a, not one just for, you know, not someone just to touch your back. She goes, it's going to happen again. You have to take care of the source. You have to take care of your stress. And, and I was just thinking about that because how many times do we wait until it's so bad? We have no other option, but taking care of ourselves. And that is not self-care that massage. It was incredibly, incredibly painful. I love getting massages. I still could like, I could still feel her fingers like pushing on those areas of my shoulder of my, um, right under my shoulder blade where they were, com where it was completely locked up and seized. So long term well being. It's that sustained sense of well being, peace, contentment. It is the massage, the pedicure, the long walk that you get to take and just listen to the sounds of nature. Um, it is all of the, you know, even sitting and um, reading a book, it is lighting a candle. It is taking care of yourself when you're already at a level of, of care. You're already at a level of well being, and this is furthering you. This is, you know, pouring to top off the cup instead of fill the empty cup. It's very different when you care for yourself from a full cup than when you're trying to pour into a cup that has a hole in the bottom. I, those styrofoam cups, you know, when we're, when we are at, you know, like Chick fil A has them, right? Um, and how many times have I told my daughter to be careful when she pokes her, puts her straw in? She just kind of pops it through. Well, several times it actually punctures a small puncture in the cup. And one that when she puts it in a little cup holder, we don't notice right away, but it makes a huge mess and she loses her drink. Trying to refill that or trying to clean that up, trying to even get it out of the car without it spilling everywhere is incredibly difficult. And sometimes that's what trying to take care of ourselves are. Like we are trying to like just fill the holes and get get us outside so we can start the cleanup process. Don't get there. Make 2024 where you don't get to that point. You have a full cup that you get to top off. Our cup is always, you're always, you've always got to fill it because we use so much. We, um, 
we do so many things. It's the energy that we expend taking care of our families, taking care of our our friends, our community, um, working on whatever work you do. We use a lot of energy. And so it, we have to have a, a long-term plan to fill our cup. And then also the idea of balance. Now, balance here does not mean equal. There's, you know, we have work life, we have personal life, we have family, we have self-care, we have, you know, all the different areas of our whole self, right? It is not having balance does not mean everything's equal. Like I work 40 hours a week and I play with my kids 40 hours a week. Well, that's not even possible. We don't have 80 hours, is it? Yeah, I guess we do have 80 hours, but including like sleeping and everything. Just work with me here. But what it balance here means is that in this season, how much do you need to work? How much do you need to focus your energy on work? How much do you need to focus on your family life? And how much do you need to focus on keeping you at a level where you are taken care of, where your um, cup is full? That is balance. And that changes because some seasons, like during the holiday season, a lot of a lot of you have talked about how work and and even family life, like our, our responsibilities kind of lower and our rest and entertainment kind of can go up higher. Our fun level can go up higher. So that when we identify and we create an intentional balance where we do what we got to do in the areas. That's what I mean here. I don't mean that one area like it takes over all the others. And so that shifts over time. Enjoy that. Embrace it. Recognize it at each season, how much things change. I've talked about how even just the idea of cooking dinner um, in the summer, in the um, in the summer, I have more time and I really enjoy cooking in the fall and spring with sports my time is a lot more limited. And so it's not as enjoyable. So it's an energy sucking instead of an energy giving activity. And so that changes the balance. Like I I move it out of my brings me joy and move it into it is something that a responsibility I need to take care of. So that's kind of the balance where it's like, okay, then what can I put in its place that I enjoy? Well, reading in the car while the kids are at sports. That's one thing that I have started doing and I'm like, oh, this is, this does fill me up. So that's where I'm talking about the balance of when you remove one from your energy bringing, you need to put something back in there. And so getting out of this escape mode, which is there's, there's a difference between escape and rest and rest is not the opposite of productivity. It's not the opposite of work. It's the partner. Escape is the opposite of rest. Escaping when we've gone so deep, our cup is so empty and has a gaping hole that we can't fill it. So what can we do to, like, what can we do to make sure we don't get to that level? And if we are at that level, recognize it. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace, please, because you don't get there overnight. You don't get there because you don't care. You get there because you care too much. You you have given so much that it's been challenging for you to take care of yourself. So one is create a self-care plan. Just like I mentioned, having my list of energy bringing activities, self-care, and energy draining activities activities, like work and responsibilities. And again, there could be some work and responsibilities in the self-care side if they bring me energy, if they bring you energy. So ask yourself, but create a self-care plan. Have your list of things that you can do when I start to feel like I, um, I'm numbing out. And in order to feel that, you've got to notice it. Start to notice what you're thinking about, what you're doing. Look at your screen time. Are you spending more time on your phone than and playing Candy Crush than, you know, playing a game with your kids? 
Like, let's look at things like that to start to notice. Also set boundaries, set boundaries for yourself. Um, today on uh, one of the things that we are instituting on um, Sundays is, um, well, it's a no electronic Sunday. And I get the irony that I'm recording this on a Sunday, but you know, it's, it is what it is. We're still working it out and we're just getting off of a holiday schedule. So I'm going to give myself a little grace, but this is the only thing on the electronics that I'm doing today. Um, I have a daughter who thinks that we should spend every moment together doing all kinds of things. We've already made candles. We've made brownies. We have, um, clean, we've done laundry. We have cleaned out a closet, um, got rid of a bunch of, uh, coats that don't fit us so we can donate them. We've had a pretty productive Sunday, but it's been fun. So it's been restful. And so that's a boundary that we have decided as a family. Now I have a son who's upstairs and um, he is refusing to speak to us because it's the worst thing ever. You know, a couple Sundays in and he'll get used to it. But that's his choice. But I know that disconnecting and protecting our time and energy is really important. And that's our intention. Another is practice mindfulness. Today, when um, there was a family leaving church and their little girl was like the mom was right behind her pushing a stroller. And I say that loosely because it was at a snail's pace. The little girl was meandering. Um, she was, she's probably maybe maybe three or four, like she's walking really good. And she is just looking at everything and enjoying life. And it's really funny. Um, she really was in the moment. She was looking around and the mom who was, she was handling it well. You could tell she was ready to go. Um, and she was tired. It's cold outside. She's pushing a stroller. She's got to, you know, load it down. Um, but we laughed at the fact that she was so like, she is what we strive to be like in the moment. She was noticing everything. She was enjoying it. She was like humming. It was really cute. But we need to, we need to be more like that little girl. And even, I mean, it took them a good 10 minutes to walk to their car, which was maybe a hundred feet away. Maybe I'm not great with um, distances like that, but it, I mean, it was not far and it took her like 10 minutes and the mom just embraced it. And she, every once in a while, she'd look back at me and I'd just give her a thumbs up and we'd smile. And it's like, yeah, she just, there was nothing that was going to rush her. Nothing. She was going to enjoy that walk. And I was thinking about what can I enjoy to the point where I meander and enjoy it. And so when we practice mindfulness, when we practice staying in the moment, and then we, we engage in activities that we really enjoy and we notice and we embrace enjoying them because we can do something we love and still it not fill us up because we're actually thinking about the next thing that we have to do. So stay in the moment and rather than using them as a way to escape, how can you be present in the moment? The next is seek support. I did an episode not too long ago about um, asking for help and why we don't ask for help. And it's, it's so crazy because we all want to help others, but the only way we can help is if someone would um, let us help. And one of the best ways is ask, ask for help. Even if you don't want to, don't hesitate to ask a friend to speak with you, to walk with you, to um, spend some time with you, to help being like, hey, I know you're really good at this. Do you mind helping me out? Because we also know that when we ask for help, that person is also more likely to ask us for help. Um, I have a friend who, um, I feel like some of the things that I ask her are like way too much. Um, like she's watching, both my kids are gonna stay at her house later this week um, for the night. And, and she's like, Tammy, she goes, my house is always full of kids. This is not too much. Um, and I'm, I'm just really excited because I did not feel guilty about asking her. She's asked me before and I've, you know, and, and I'm, if I can, I'm grateful to do it. We love helping 
And so give someone else the blessing by asking for help and take that burden off your shoulders. And the last one is one of my favorite things to talk about is to celebrate small wins. Celebrate your progress. Look at your self-care plan that you've created. And if that's something you want to do, that is something we can do together. Um, Get onto my calendar. Let's talk about what self-care looks like for you. Um, We can do just a a one, well, we could talk about it for 20 minutes. Let's talk about what's possible, but we can do a one-off session if you really want, or maybe if there's enough interest, I'll do another workshop on creating a a whole self-care plan for 2024. But celebrate your wins. When you celebrate the progress, the small steps, the small steps turn into bigger results and bigger steps. And you're able to create a rhythm and a pattern and a habit without force, without trying to um, feel guilty because we're not doing it already. Celebrate those small wins and enjoy every moment. So one of the things, well, not one of the things, I've been talking about this the whole time, is as I wrap up here, start to notice if you're in escape mode. Do you feel like you need to go somewhere else or get out of the house or get out of your routine to survive? If you do, do not hesitate on asking for help. Do not hesitate in making a small change and really look at what you want. Staying in that escape mode is so dangerous. And I don't know about you, but that's not what I want for 2024. I want to be fulfilled. I want to feel joyful. I want to be energized. I want to be able to serve from abundance and not out of obligation. I want to grow and I want to model for my kids what a healthy woman is, what a healthy parent is, what a healthy person is is I don't want to show them exhaustion. I don't want to give them my less less than my best. I want to make sure that they see how great life can be, even when it's hard, even when we have responsibilities, even when we have phone calls to make and appointments to do and, uh, and all of that. Even when we have two adults, it can still be amazing. So start to start to recognize, am I in escape mode? Or am I in whole self-care? Know the difference and create a plan to get into that whole self-care. And again, if this is something you want to talk about, reach out to me. DM me on um, Instagram or Facebook. Um, You can, yeah, send me an email. DMs are a lot faster. It's a lot cleaner and I can see them a lot lot, um, quicker than I can an email. But reach out and let's talk about what's possible. If you're really, if you're really ready to dive in and see what impact can I make this year? If I can make, I've been saying this for the last 10 years and I want to make this year my year. How much longer do you want to say that? And how are you ready to just, let's do it. What's going to happen if you go another year in the same spot? Let's not say a year from now that 2025 is going to be my year. Let's prove that 2024 is going to be amazing. So with that, like get on my calendar. Let's chat. Let's do this. I cannot wait to share with you and to um, spend this year with you. I am coming up on three years of this podcast, which is super exciting. And um, yeah, and just what I have planned for for you and for um, the podcast And really, there's no point of this podcast if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. Um, And with that, if you have not left me a rating and review on on Apple or Spotify, I would really appreciate it if you took two minutes and did that. That review, though, it like it means a lot to me. I do read all of them and it helps me see that you value this. That helps me see that this is something worth um, keeping going on it. Um, it helps me see what resonates and what sticks out to you. Um, the other thing it does is it helps other people find the podcast. That is one way that the algorithms at B, um, that's one of the ways that they use, um, as an indication if the podcast should be, um, 
I just lost the word. If it should be like searchable or um, if they, they push it, if they market it, if they will tell other people about it is those reviews. Um, so I would really appreciate it if you could just take two minutes and wherever you listen, if you could leave me a review. Also, if this episode, if you have a friend who together, you guys are going to make a commitment to move into a whole self-care plan and make 2024 your year, share this episode and just, or share the podcast in general with them, but share this episode and talk about what it, like, how have you been in escape mode? Um, I know that there's many areas that that's what I've been operating in, in, and I don't want to do that anymore. And I don't want that for you either. With that, get on my calendar. Let's talk about how amazing 2024 can be. I actually am starting a new, like, it's a, it's a one session. Um, it's called an introductory, uh, strategic assessment. Um, I know businessy, but it's a personal strategic assessment. Um, you'll take a, um, I'll have a Enneagram assessment for you, a really thorough one, as well as a questionnaire that I created. And then we'll meet together and we will and like, we'll lay out a blueprint, a plan for, for you in 2024. And so this this I'm excited about this um, this session because I know a lot of people they you want to try coaching before you commit to coaching. This is the way to do it. So if you're interested in the introductory strategic assessment, the ISA, then reach out to me and say, hey, I want to do that one session with you. Um, I want to do the ISA, and I'll uh, send you the link to get started. Well. With that, friend, choose joy until joy chooses you. Practice whole self-care. Stop trying to escape your life and create a life that you really love. With that, I will see you next week. Bye.